We will now take a few minutes to review anticholinergics. At the conclusion of this video, the nurse should be able to identify the pertinent side effects and nursing implications of anticholinergics. Examples of anticholinergics include propanthaline, atropine, scopolamine, benztropine. Another example includes belladonna. Anticholinergics work by competing with acetylcholine at receptor sites in the autonomic nervous system. They cause relaxation of the ciliary muscles and dilation of the pupils. They also can cause bronchodilation and decrease bronchial secretions. They decrease GI motility. They decrease gastric secretory activity and increase esophageal sphincter tone. They can increase the heart rate or create tachycardia. In addition, atropine, opropanthaline, as well as scopolamine are considered, as well as anticholinergic, antimuscarinic. They inhibit the action of acetylcholine at sites innervated by postganglionic cholinergic nerves. Anticholinergics have a variety of indications and uses. Examples include for ophthalmic exams, again, because they can create mydriasis or pupil dilation, so atropine or scopolamine could be used. As they can address nausea and vomiting, scopolamine is often used to address motion sickness. Anticholinergics are often given for patients preoperatively as they affect gastric emptying time and decrease gastric secretions. Commonly think of medicating these patients with scopolamine. Other indications include Parkinson's disease. That often comes to mind as one of the most common medications used to treat that disorder, benztropine. For patients that have bradyarrhythmias, we can give them atropine. If a client's experiencing urinary incontinence, we could treat them with propanthaline. Oxybutynin is an anticholinergic that is used as a urinary tract spasmodic. Side effects are adverse effects, blurred vision or dry eyes, dry mouth, urinary retention, and change in heart rate. I always remember this saying with the common side effects of anticholinergics because in addition to blurred vision, dry mouth, and urinary retention, they can also cause constipation. They tend to dry things up. So I remember the phrase, I can't see, I can't pee, I can't stool, I can't drool, and that helps you remember those four. We use atropine for patients with a very slow or low heart rate as atropine will increase the client's heart rate. Important nursing considerations include monitoring your client's urinary output because again, they're at risk for urinary retention. Remember that anticholinergics are contraindicated if your client has a diagnosis of glaucoma. Other contraindications include any history of a hypersensitivity or if they have a tachycardia due to thyrotoxicosis or cardiac insufficiency. We also need to use special caution if the client has some type of urinary tract pathology or if they're at risk for a GI obstruction. Another important consideration is the timing of anticholinergics. Your client needs to take this medication 30 minutes before meals, at bedtime, or two hours after eating. Additional nursing considerations include providing good mouth care for your client because of the dry mouth that they commonly experience. You need to be sure to assess their abdomen because of the effects that anticholinergics can have on GI motility. We know that constipation is a risk for this client and want to be sure to include those preventative measures such as pushing PO fluids and making sure that they're consuming plenty of fiber in their diet. Be aware of the potential for additive anticholinergic effects if your client is administered another medication that possesses anticholinergic activity such as certain antihistamines or certain antidepressants. Finally, your client may experience drowsiness. Given this, do not allow your client to drive, operate heavy machinery, any action that requires quick reflexes until their particular response to the medication is known. 
I encourage you to take some time to go back and review the detailed adverse effects and nursing considerations provided in your NCLEX RN content review guide. Here is your practice question. Which medication treats a cholinergic crisis? Number one, phentolamine mesylate. Two, atropine sulfate. Three, dopamine. Four, epinephrine. Take a moment and then select your answer. Number one is incorrect. This medication is an alpha adrenergic inhibitor. Two, atropine sulfate is the correct response. Atropine is used to treat certain aspects of cholinergic crisis. Atropine is an anticholinergic as well as antimuscarinic. It blocks acetylcholine at parasympathetic receptor sites. It increases heart rate and cardiac output, and it decreases secretions. Side effects include tachycardia, cardiac dysrhythmias, blurred vision, dry mouth, constipation, and urinary retention. Nursing considerations include monitoring heart rate, vital signs, vision, and gastrointestinal function. Your client should be instructed to report any blurred vision and urinary retention. Three is incorrect. This is an adrenergic stimulator depending on dosage. Four is incorrect. This is a beta-1 and beta-2 adrenergic stimulator. This completes our presentation on anticholinergics.